Many thanks for joining us on the news tonight. Presidential candidates have continued to tell Nigerians what they will do if elected president. At the second series of the Arise News presidential town hall meeting, four presidential candidates highlight what they would do differently to make sure Nigeria surmounts her present challenges if elected in 2023. The second series of the Arise News presidential town hall meeting featured four presidential candidates. Yaba Gisani of the Africa Democratic Party, Professor Peter Omeadi of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, Adewole Adebayo of the Social Democratic Party, and Omoye Leshore of the African Action Congress. Here, security and economy are the major issues they were asked to speak on. All the candidates agreed that security is a major issue that must be tackled, but offer different strategies to address the situation. About the uh, vigilantes that are coming up across the country, they should be allowed to uh, operate. Then, but the, the critical question is uh, how they can effectively work with arms. And then that is the uh, uh, conundrum where hedgemen have AK-47 and then people who are fashioned to secure towns and villages are denied the same. At the federal level, there is an existing constitution that I'm going to swear on May 29 to uphold. Within that constitution, I have all it takes to eliminate crime. And the two steps to take to eliminate crime is to eliminate crime within government. That is the hardest thing to do in Nigeria. One of the reasons why we don't have an efficient police system is that if we had an efficient police system, half of those who are in government would be in jail. So it is not in the interest of government as it is today to have an effective police. But they need the police for VIP protection. So I will make that difference. I think what the states are telling us is that Nigeria is ripe for that restructuring we've been asking for. And because we delayed it, governors are acting on their own. But the creation of sometimes rogue security units would never help Nigeria. So what I would encourage us to do and what I want to do is to junket the 1999 constitution created by the military. Let the Nigeria nation create its own military, I mean its own constitution that is not a fraudulent document as we have now. And that constitution will address the issue of state police. Regional you know, police that were formed out of desperation, you know, you, because why, if you do that, it's a recipe for uh, 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 disembankment, disembankment of the, of, the, of the country itself, because uh, this security outfit came out of frustration. It's not something that was discussed on the basis of the need to have it as a nation. So I will not allow that to happen. The free fall of the Naira in recent times debt of manufacturing sector, huge unemployment figures, epileptic power supplies are issues the four candidates addressed. They all agree that a different approach is needed to defeat terrorism and other criminalities. I want to take that percentage of our dividends and start investing it in energy mixes, starting from solar, tidal, right, and also hydro, as well, of, as well as biofuel like biomass, and use these mixes to create both employment and real energy that can hook at least some 20 million homes immediately in four years to the national, I mean, to, to grids. Our gas reserve is enough. It's an envy of the world. So why will I have gas under my feet and not use it? Because I want to win an argument. So what you do is that you create an environment whereby you allow Tama to be used because we have gas. You allow hydro to be used. Even this flood we had, we could have built one in Taraba or, or Benue or Damawa to relieve from Lagdo Dam. Third, you ensure that you allow solar to be used. You allow wind to be used. The next thing I look at is how do I turn this country to be the tourist destination? You know, because look at look at uh, Dubai. Dubai yes had oil, but Dubai is not all about oil. It's about tourism. It's about how you organize, you know, the country. And we are occupying a very choicey position on the equator. 
that if we organize ourselves, you know, properly, chase out this insecurity, which is artificial, really, because by the time you take care of the architecture we have talked about here, you will have a beautiful nation that everybody wants to come to. We have so much, believe you me, that and tourism, like you said, you don't have to invest much. Solar energy, uh, which is uh, affordable here, I will also go for the windmill. But then I will have to bring to your notice something we know is happening now. In the University of Nigeria, Nsoka, uh, 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 they are using excreta to bring power. The candidates also agree that the present 1999 constitution is not perfect. They promise to initiate an amendment. The second series of the Arise Town Hall meeting ends with a submission by the candidates to play by the rules in the coming election as they continue to work in different capacities for the development of the nation. All right, joining us now, uh, RISE analyst Dr. Sam Amadi on News 99. Thank you so much for joining us. As usual, I'm sure you watched all of the moments at the RISE uh, presidential town hall yesterday with the four candidates, Omoyo Leshoware, Yabagi Sani, uh, uh, Prof. Uh, Peter Omadi, and of course Prince Adewole Adebayo. Your assessment, first of, of all of them, did they look pre presidential? Apart from the looks, did they really make a good case for on the issue of security and of course the economy? Well, Did they sound convincing enough to you? Yeah. What was their performance? It, it, you like? know, if you compare with uh, other parts of the world, like the U.S., I mean, sometimes uh, what they call third party candidates, meaning persons who are not the two major contenders, mm -hmm. oftentimes they break into the A list by their performance in town halls like this. But I would say, <coughs> uh, from what we had with the first series, uh, the first in the series, uh, mm -hmm. none of these candidates really will force our hand, assuming we have a rating to say, to force our hand to replace them with, uh, replace the top notch, the tier one mm. of the candidates, meaning the PDP candidate, APC, Labour and NNPP. Not, they, they did well, but they didn't perform extraordinary as to say, you know what, why not drop one of these A-rated the, guys mm -hmm. and jump, you know, drop, bump, bump up. Drop one of the first 11 yes. for the reserve bench. Yeah. Isn't it, that it where it matches are actually won? No, no, so it didn't you, happen. You, it didn't happen. They were okay. <coughs> they, they, they showed uh, grasp of the issue good enough. Uh, on the whole, it was actually a better organized <coughs> um, setting. First, they, were, they sat down, so they, the level of agitation and vehemence was less compared with the first day. But once you stand up, it's like you really need to punch your way, you know? But it's sad and more relaxed. And of course, there are no initial hiccups like we had with mm. disruptions. Again, maybe the quality of moderation was less, you know, much more modulated. But then a few of them showed some breakthrough thinking. I think uh, the SDP candidate, in many of the questions, sounded maybe He's a lawyer as well, so mm -hmm. probably he had uh, the, the Abga is a, a judge, so it's not an advantage. But he started to me much more pragmatic mm -hmm. and policy oriented, the kind of things that could work. And in some cases, he brought ideas around the criminal state. So some people talk about this insecurity, our inability to function well. They forget that apart from resource, you know, architectural design, which mm -hmm. is important, institutions matter, but also the, the normative norms uh, and the cultural. You know, setting of policing, security also counts. So he brings up the notion of the criminal state. So if a bureaucracy itself is criminal, in the sense that elements within that system mm. connive, conspire, even execute criminal action, you will be born a counter at both ends. So you are pursuing criminals out there, but of course you have criminals are pursuing criminals. So mm. that's a good point. Again, um, I think both were, and then, of course, with the state police, we see a, co a divergence and convergence. Mm -hmm. Everybody seemed to agree with state police uh, in that team, but for mm -hmm. uh, Yabada, Yabaga, who, interestingly, thinks, is sunny. Yeah, thinks yeah. It, it's disruptive mm -hmm. and could lead to some kind of state collapse or disunity. But again, if you map it, your politics seem to focus, drive some of the positions. You know, state police seem to be those who are more in the south feel 
a lot more urgency. Mm -hmm. But you know, he's the only uh, northern candidate on that on that table. Seem to have a greater the long term about Sepolis. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look at the economy, everybody that fires, they all agree they need to expand economic growth, and that's been the challenge. How do you grow the economy? Either in with structural increasing the changing the structural change or mm. condensed growth so we've seen in <laughs> asia and uh, ac across europe that condensed growth means that you need to double your growth it took countries like the uk 50 something years mm. it took china about 10 years you know, it took uh, korea 20 some 25 years Singapore to double their 20 something. 20 something to mm. yeah. double their gdp so we need that level of co and of course with what we're saying that Modern states that entered development had shorter time span to double. Right. The UK, the US <coughs> took almost half a century. Now we're taking 20 years, 10 years, for mm -hmm. the case of China, 15 years, 20 years. So, so it's possible that if we optimize the resources available to us, whether in terms of talking about renewable energy, if we ensure less waste, mm -hmm. increase, increase GDP growth, but there's also Argument around structural change, and that's why right. Shawere yes. and talked I was just about the structure. Yeah, in, in, indeed. Uh, Yabagasani precisely said that regional security outfits were product or are product of frustration, mm. and that's why he's against them. Uh, but yes, yeah, you talk about the economy, and Shawere was talking about waste. A lot of waste in the system. Mm -hmm. For instance, he says it's going to abolish the Senate. There's no need for the Senate. Mm -hmm. uh, he talked about changing the Constitution entirely. And that person who talked about the Constitution and the laws being responsible for the state of the nation where we are was Yabagisani. He says the rule of law is the answer to the problems of insecurity, corruption, and poverty. How exactly do they correlate? Well, I, I think, okay, let's take Shoare's point. I mean, there's a lot to say about structural change. Okay. Uh, and oftentimes, this is not only constitutional. There are administrative, you know, managerial changes are necessary. So, for example, even if you don't do state police, which requires constant amendment, significant decentralization and devotion of function, function of functionality of the police mm -hmm. down to local level could happen. So, for example, you don't need a constitutional change for the um, police commissioners, DPOs, to have greater power to action, investigate, and deal without necessarily reporting back to IG mm -hmm. in Abuja. In Abuja. Yeah. So there are things we can do without necessarily getting to, you know, um, a constitutional change. So structural is important. But, you see, again, the, this waste is talking about optimizing, uh, reducing cost of governance. Mm. They help us with getting by. But the big push in terms of economic growth will come from expanding the frontier of production. So in a sense, we might be looking at technology improving productivity. Mm -hmm. We might be looking at changing the character of the economy in a way that we use more of our people. We include rural uh, economy. We improve rural economy. Did differ under um, uh, 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 Babangida? There was a great idea of the development of rural road infrastructure. An idea was integrate rural development with infrastructure development with economic development. Now, so we need to do all those big ideas to drive up growth. Mm. But again, those structural things are important. Uh, the other issue around for social uh, and state police, you would look at our history. In 1957-58 Willikis report, Willikis commission dealt with the issue of state police. And they said that we should have national police, but in two years we should transition to uh, state police. Because the idea was that in that two years, all those issues people concerned about being used against us and protocols. So basically, it's not necessarily frustration. But even if it is, it means that we have been frustrated since 1957. Mm -hmm. And so the argument against the police on the basis of frustration is not strong. The argument will be, how do you ensure that the state police is itself professionalized as well as not used as a tool of victimization by state governors? So the record, in fact, as we have federal police today, like you already observed, state governors use them to oppress their opponents. So mm -hmm. how much more will you have a state police? So the argument on both sides is logical. But what I think is that beyond state police as a function of constitutional reform, we can actually have deep-rooted administrative reform of the police to make them professional, to ensure that they don't have to depend on political authorization. If you look at the, the Police Act and the Constitution, there's no requirement for the IG or the Commission of Police to resort to the governor 
in terms of directives in managing crime or protecting people and life and property. But oftentimes, because of our political economy, the dependency of institutions right. on those who have the resource to share and the rent to give, people willingly submit otherwise independent agencies to government control. So I think that apart from structuring, you have to mm. deal with the issue of incentive structure, the issue of cultural norms, and how we will insulate institutions from overt political you know, control. So that right. we don't just design big architecture, okay, independent, we have state police everywhere, but state police now falls back to the governor's police, mm. and I don't know you complicate the crisis of governance and, de and democracy in the states. Mm. We have Frank Tieti, a RISE analyst, joining us. Uh, good to see you, uh, Frank. Yes, we're trying to dissect uh, what the gentlemen who presented themselves or presenting themselves uh, to be president in 2023, what they had to say concerning security and, of course, the economy. But let's still stay with security. We'd like to uh, get your take uh, on that. Well, Yabagi Sani, you know, to the question of how he will govern Nigeria, says, look, rule of law is a solution to Nigeria's insecurity, uh, corruption, and, of course, uh, poverty. And um, at Debayo of uh, the SDP seems to believe that the military, you know, has been weakened by the civilian population. Uh, let me, you know, quote what he said here. Um, you know, military is weakening police and air force. Civilians also weakening the military for fear of being overthrown. Uh, what do you make of, uh, you know, these takes, these positions on the issue of ending insecurity in Nigeria? Well, um Adebayo and the rest of the candidates spoke very eloquently yesterday. In fact, I felt proud as a Nigerian to say that uh, we don't have deficit of uh, brilliant minds like uh, uh, Shore Adebayo, uh, uh, Professor Mehdi, and uh, Engineer Yabagi. However, with regards to the issue of uh, insecurity, um, none of them actually uh, tackled it in such a manner that is different from what others have been saying. Uh, what has been the bandwagon uh, position that is in, uh, increased the number of uh, uh, military personnel and then uh, import uh, the use of technology and all of that. Uh, forgetting that uh, we have had a continued period of degradation, social degradation in our country that has led to this weakening of uh, the, the, the cohesive forces in our country. And that's the reason why ragtag uh, bandits and insurgents can actually bring this country to its knees the way it has done under President uh, uh, Buhari, despite all, that, uh, all the promises that uh, the APC made and the strong assertion he made as a, military, a former military general. Uh, there, were no, there were no much details as to what they would do to actually arrest the insecurity situation other than uh, these um, uh, high-sounding uh, ideas that uh, they were well expressed yesterday. Uh, again, the, if you talk in terms of uh, what has happened, because we have had a long number of years of military rule in this country, uh, uh, to allude to the problem, yes, we are, we are not in doubt about what the problems are, that the military in, uh, holding sway uh, in terms of governance actually did not care much in empowering the police and the other um, uh, military uh, uh, aspects that Adibaya referred to. However, solutions are more important. So what's going to happen? I think so Shori, on the other hand, spoke more as to a more pragmatic approach in ensuring that uh, there is an improved security situation in Nigeria. Uh, Frank Tete, uh, do you agree that we are beginning to see a consensus from the candidates so far that have presented themselves at the Arise News Presidential Town Hall Series that it's time to move away from an oil-dependent economy? And are you convinced with your arguments? For instance, yesterday we heard from Professor Umedi of Abga saying, talking about tax collection, uh, Yabagi Sani talking about agriculture, and interestingly, tourism. It's the first time I'm hearing it. Uh, AI, information and uh, uh, technology. Uh, on the part of the SDP presidential candidate, he talked about um, agriculture, steel, mining, Agile Kuta still coming back on board. And Showere was also very, very uh, vocal about 
moving away from being oil dependent, is it safe to say we might be seeing a Nigeria truly moving away from oil economy? Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, Nigeria may just join the rest of the world to in, in this uh, new trend of moving away from fossil fuel dependent economies, but the presidential candidates uh, uh, were also quietly uh, acknowledging that uh, we still depend very much on oil. Adebayo referred to the large amount of uh, gas deposits that we have in Nigeria, and Shawari referred to the uh, amount of uh, unpaid debts owed to Nigeria by the international oil companies mining uh, crude oil in Nigeria. Uh, what the presidential as uh, aspirants or uh, candidates uh, failed to uh, express is the, to acknowledge that we will still for a long time depend on oil as a country. What, we haven't made much preparations to move away uh, from oil. Uh, I appreciate and uh, respect Engineer Yabagi's uh, fine understanding of uh, the energy transitions to other non-oil-based um, non uh, energy sources. However, a, a more you know, realistic thing to do would have been for them to acknowledge that for another 30 years or so, uh, Nigeria will still depend on oil. Uh, Shori did refer to the fact that, well, much of those uh, resources that will come from oil and gas will now be reinvested in other possible uh, uh, renewable uh, energy sources. But to think that uh, we will swiftly move away from oil in the coming administration, that may not be, that may be very far from the, uh, the reality. However, with the, what these candidates have said yesterday uh, meant that, well, what will happen is that we will just see a new set of uh, a paradigmatic change uh, in the sense that Nigeria will now begin to see a very aggressive uh, pursuit of renewables in terms of uh, alternatives to oil and gas. Sir, before we let you, uh, both of you go, uh, SDP's Debayo says, look, oil and gas, I should leave the gas that I have and, you know, talk about the future economy. What he is saying is, look, we're going to use oil and gas, the revenue, the proceeds from that to prepare for that future that we're talking about. What do you make of that position? And of course, uh, uh, I think Shoare actually said he will leave the issue of steel development to succeeding governments. Well, I think, um, like I said, Adebayo was pragmatic, understands policy. Look, when I was in the, uh, the, the, the sector, I made it very clear. We need to optimize gas resource. We are very uh, almost a gas country, so we need we need it. We have to be strategic in engaging clean fuel. It's difficult to leverage on renewable. You need a load base for industrial development. You can do two things. You can you can work and chew gum. We have to optimize oil. We also have to ensure that we are strategically aligning ourselves to the new economy, the green economy. So I wouldn't like us to be carried away by the so-called renewable. We need to make sure that in the morning after, we are there to play big on that scene. But for now, you need to optimize oil and gas. We also have coal that is critical, super critical, meaning mm. it's not environmentally damaging. We saw what happened with the COVID or with the uh, Ukraine war, that Europe started thinking around getting back to their gas and getting back to their coal. Development is strategic. It don't just move because it's sexy or it's romantic out there. You have to be strategic. You have to say what our competing advantage. What is what is the inflection point? Do we have the leverage, the anchor? So we push ourselves from opportunities to have. They become a major player. We need to optimize gas. I agree with you 100. We need to keep an eye and work the fiscal, structural, commercial, and policy support for a green economy. For now, we need to optimize and get out of this acute energy shortage. Right. We must thank you both. <laughs> As always, very insightful. Uh, Dr. Sam Amadi and Frank Tate, RI's News Analyst. Thank you.